human systems and the causes of their behavior. In this video, we'll look at the source of the problems in a human system, how you change the system behavior, and the question of who is responsible for the system behavior. Let's consider a problem of a large-scale human system. One of the principles of systems thinking is that what we call problems are actually a result of the system functioning perfectly as designed. In the United States, there's an epidemic of early onset of type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is a disease normally acquired in middle age and is caused by overconsumption of sugar. In the United States, children are now developing this serious disease. We would clearly consider this a problem. In the systems thinking language, the disease epidemic is a symptom of the system. At the left, we correlate this symptom with the tip of an iceberg to emphasize the fact that, like an iceberg, what is seen is only about 10% of the larger problem. And, like an iceberg, if we spent our energy on somehow eliminating the tip, the buoyancy forces acting on the volume of ice beneath the surface would recreate the tip. In the same way, if we could somehow cure the disease, we expect that children would continue to acquire the disease because of systemic forces. What are these forces? Beneath the surface, there are hidden patterns of behavior or trends that lead to the symptom. In the illustration of diabetes, there is an overabundance of sugar in the diet of children in the United States. Why are children eating so much sugar? Well, beneath the pattern of this consumption, there's a set of systemic structures that cause the pattern. Again, in our illustration, high consumption of sugar for children is a consequence of farming policies from the 1970s that results in billions of dollars of federal monies used to subsidize the growth of corn each year. This overproduction of corn has been converted to high fructose corn syrup, a con which is a concentrated sugar. In other words, sugar is, is a subsidized commodity. It is therefore used as an ingredient in many food products whose costs are now lower because of the subsidy. The bottom line is that foods containing sugar and sugar products are very low cost and have therefore become a larger fraction of our caloric intake. Now, how did these systemic st structures get in place? Well, those who created the policies had a set of mental models that farm subsidies would be beneficial. They assumed that without government subsidies, farm, farmers would no longer farm and the U.S. would not have a reliable source of food. So back to our systems principle, we can see that the problem of early onset of type 2 diabetes is actually the result of the system functioning perfectly as designed, beginning with the beliefs and assumptions of the designers. To be sure, it is an unintended consequence but it is a direct consequence of the hidden mental models, the systemic structures that are created out of those mental models, and the patterns that arise because of the structure. To permanently fix the problem, we must intervene in the hidden parts of the system, with the higher leverage lying in the deepest part of the system, the mental models. Recall that in a dynamic system, the behavior of the system is a result of each of the individual components interacting together. You can't separate one from the other. It's really tempting to blame one part of the system for the behavior of the system, but in truth, without each of the elements of the system, the behavior of the system would not arise. So in a system's point of view, the cause of the system's behavior is the collective interaction of each of the elements. In summary, the phenomena that we normally consider problems are caused by systems functioning as design. The system is designed by those who hold certain beliefs, values, and assumptions. Those mental models are then embedded in the systemic structures through policies and practices. The systemic structures, in turn, cause patterns of behavior that eventually create the problem. All system participants working together cause the problem. The greatest leverage for changing the system is actually in the deepest, most hidden part of the system, the mental models that created the systemic structures and patterns. In the next video, we view systemic causes from Aristotle's model of causality.